This is the new GT2 and GT1, brand new flagship scooters from Segway. The first beast scooters and first dual motor electric scooters Segway has ever made. We've been performance testing all week and now we've got the data and an inside look at some never seen before features. Find out what they're like to ride and what happens when the world's biggest scooter company takes on two new categories of performance scooters. The GT2 may be Segway's first dual motor scooter, but the GT1 is also a significant first, a single motor scooter that outperforms most dual motor scooters. Another important first, the GTs are the first Segways with a rider weight capacity of 330 pounds. Looking at these scooters, it's clear that Segway dumped a metric ton of engineering dollars into the GTs. Let me show you what I mean. When I first heard about the transparent passive matrix OLED display, I thought a clear dash sounded like a gimmick, but in person, it's one of my absolute favorite things about the GT2. It looks like a heads up display on a fighter jet. Both scooters have well laid out dashboards showing you just what you need to know, but the GT2s also gives you battery percentage and a range remaining countdown and is easier to read in bright sunlight than the GT1's conventional LED dash. The cockpit feels like part motorcycle and part Ferrari with a twist grip throttle and mode buttons that let you control everything with one or two taps of your thumbs without looking down. You can change riding modes, switch from real wheel drive to two wheel drive, switch on the lights and beep the horn. For deeper control, there's the app. You can turn on zero start, set lighting effects, and there's a never seen before feature that lets you use the brakes and throttle at the same time. We'll cover that in the performance section. The app also lets you put the scooter into sentry mode, which locks the wheels into place. If someone tries to move the scooter a little, it lights up. If they try to move it a little more, it makes a lot of noise. The GT2 and GT1 are nearly identical, but other than the dashboard, there are a couple clues as to which one's which. The subtle O2 and O1 on the side panel, and the even more subtle rose gold and titanium metallic finishes, these scooters look and feel like they're carved out of one solid piece of scrutanium. Every little detail of the GT's build quality feels next level. Tubeless tires with a flat resistant coating bonded to the inside, air channels that run down the side of the scooter for cooling, the security torque screws where the handlebars mount, a rubber edge at the front of the fairings, the charging port cover and rubber seal, the way the deck surrounds the rider's foot, adding to the already excellent fender protection. Details like these make the IPX4 water resistance rating feel very conservative. Even the accessories are next level, but we'll get to that in safety. The ride quality of the GT series makes them solid contenders for the best we've ever ridden, and there are five reasons why. First of all, I love the twist throttle. There is a good reason that every motorcycle in the world uses them. The GT throttle feels intuitive and easy to use. There's no dead zone at the beginning of travel, and the response is quick without feeling abrupt. From a dead stop, the acceleration on both GTs is surprisingly smooth for beast scooters, but then builds rapidly as you speed up. Once you get going, the mid-range acceleration is so strong, it can feel a little twitchy if you're trying to go exactly 25 miles per hour, for example, but fortunately, this problem is solved by the best cruise control ever. One bonk with your thumb turns it on instantly, and any brake or throttle input then turns it off. Even if you're just coasting with no throttle at all, one push and it'll immediately maintain your exact current speed. It's so simple and intuitive, we wouldn't be surprised to see other personal electric vehicles copy this user interface. Another first ever feature is that the GT2 has traction control. For example, if the front wheel starts to spin, it reduces the power to the front wheel until traction returns. Toggling into race mode disables traction control and lights up a warning label to remind you that it's off. And the traction control really works, but it's so well integrated that you won't even notice it working until you turn it off. You will notice the girder front end and adjustable hydraulic shocks. The front end looks really cool and whether you're on or off road, nothing beats the ride quality of adjustable hydraulic suspension. I don't know if it's the girder front end or the 18 degree rake angle, the largest we've ever seen by far, but even without a steering damper, the GTs are more stable than the NAMI is with a steering damper. It's an impressive feat of engineering to make scooters this quick, but also this easy to ride. 
How quick? In our test, the GT2 rockets from zero to 30 in just 4.1 seconds, just behind the quickest scooters we've ever tested, the Nami Burn E and Wolf King GT, while the GT1 arrived at 30 miles per hour in 5.5 seconds, just two tenths behind the quickest light heavyweight scooter we've ever tested, the VSAT 10 Plus. While Segway has made two of the quickest scooters in their price class, it's pretty clear they weren't shooting for ultimate top speed. The ESG certified top speed of the GT2 is 41.8 miles per hour, two miles per hour slower than the similarly priced Birdie 2. We clocked the GT1 at 34.5 miles per hour, making it the fastest single motor scooter we've ever tested and competitive with many dual motor light heavyweights. The GT2 and GT1 are both world-class hill climbers. The GT2 was the third fastest scooter ever up our test hill, just behind the Burn E and Wolf King GT, averaging 20.4 miles per hour from a standing start. The GT1 is by far the fastest single motor scooter to ever climb our test hill, averaging 15.5 miles per hour from a standing start, beating more than half of the dual motor scooters we've tested. The GT2 and GT1 would both deliver better performance numbers if they had a more abrupt throttle, but we think most riders will find that the smooth throttle response is well worth giving up a couple tenths of a second. The GT2 and GT1 stop from 15 miles per hour in just 9.4 feet and 9.5 feet respectively, beating every beast scooter we have ever tested, and they do it in a very unconventional way. For one thing, there's no regenerative braking, so your brake response is exactly proportional to how hard you pull the levers, giving you more control. They also use a different brand of hydraulic brakes than we've ever seen. They feel better than nut brakes or zoom brakes and about the same as the Logan brakes that are on the Burn E2. The most surprising design choice are the 140 millimeter rotors. They're smaller and thicker than the rotors used on most beast scooters. The smaller diameter makes them less grabby, so it's easier to avoid skidding. Being 38% thicker makes them resist warping, bending, and overheating, so brake response didn't fade after repeated hard use. The Segway app gives you a braking option we've never seen before. Normally touching the brakes on any electric scooter disables the throttle, but if you disable brake priority in the app, it lets you apply throttle and brake at the same time. This is an expert-only feature and something you should be very careful of if you turn it on. On our range test, the GT2 covered 32.9 miles in race mode with boost mode engaged the whole time, while the GT1's smaller battery carried at 21.9 miles in race mode. Of course, you can get more range by running in sport or eco mode, but to be consistent, every scooter we range test is ridden in its fastest possible mode. Here's how the range tests ended. Below 30% battery, both scooters had a noticeable drop in acceleration, but would still maintain 30 miles per hour uphill. At this point, race mode and eco mode felt about the same. Below 10% battery, both would maintain 20 miles per hour until finally shutting down. The GT2 shut down with an indicated 3% of the battery still remaining, while the GT1 kept going for half a mile after the last bar of the battery meter started flashing. An unexpected bonus was that both scooters allowed me to restart and engage walk mode. Rather than walk as intended, I decided to ride the last half mile back to the office in walk mode at a pokey three miles per hour. The GT2 and GT1 are not very portable, even relative to other beast scooters. Both weigh over 100 pounds, and when folded, they're the tallest and second longest scooters we've ever tested. And like most beast scooters, the stems don't latch to the deck. So keep in mind, unless you have an elevator, you'll need a place on the ground floor to park it because the GTs just aren't practical to carry upstairs. The GT2 and GT1 are remarkably safe scooters considering how powerful they are. The stability, traction control, and excellent brakes make these scooters exceptionally easy to control. The lighting is also outstanding. The headlight emits 900 lumens, or about the same as one headlight on a car. But the best part are the turn signals, both because the switch is easy to use without looking down and because the signals are so easy to see. The rear signals also double as swag lights, which you can program with the app. The horn sounds kind of goofy, but it's easy to reach and allows for a polite beep or repeated use to get your point across. Segway made a very unusual choice when it came to the battery voltage. Where most Beast scooters are 60 volts or 72 volts, both the GT1 and GT2 use 52 volt batteries for enhanced voltage safety if the battery were to ever become exposed. The world's only dedicated racing scooter, the ESC SX1, uses the same voltage for the same reason. My favorite safety feature ever 
Beamer is the optional Bluetooth speaker, which lets you make vroom vroom noises. It sounds silly, but it could also be a lot of fun and help pedestrians hear you coming. My least favorite safety feature is that the throttle times out after 10 seconds of standing still. Though during the range test, I quickly got used to waking up the throttle by giving the power button a quick poke when the lights turn green. It prevents accidental throttle when moving the scooter since unlike thumb or trigger throttles, you can't really move the GTs around without touching the throttle. Pros include incredible stability, extraordinary ride quality, and they're both really ridiculously good looking. Cons include largest folded size of any scooter we've tested, range per pound below their peers, and while they're both very fast scooters, top speed are also lower than their peers. Here are some comparable scooters that I rode back to back with the GT1 and GT2 and used as benchmarks for this review. GT1 Alternatives Nami Burn E2, an ESG favorite with more range and higher top speed, but less high speed stability. Phantom V2, lighter and less expensive, but not as quick. VSAT 10 Plus, higher top speed, but more abrupt throttle and poor ergonomics. GT2 Alternatives Nami Burn E2 Max, another ESG favorite with ultimate acceleration and hill climbing, but higher price. Wolf King GT Pro, higher top speed and longer range, but the GT2 has better ride quality. Thunder 2, longest range of any scooter we've tested, but much more abrupt throttle and less comfortable riding stance for long rides. So often figuring out who a scooter is for comes down to splitting hairs. The GT2 and GT1 make it pretty easy though because they're just so different from everything else and from each other. If you want to go 60 miles per hour or want a scooter that you can toss in your trunk, the GT1 and GT2 are not for you. On the other hand, if you want the ultimate blend of performance, build quality, Quality and ride quality, I can't think of anything that does it better than the GTs. As far as choosing GT1 versus GT2, I thought the answer would be duh, get the fast one. But don't let the single motor fool you. The GT1 is a very fast scooter and delivers 100% of the GT2's ride quality for a thousand bucks less. Surprisingly, the thing I'd probably miss the most if I got a GT1 is the gorgeous GT2 dashboard. It's been an epic week testing the Segway GT2 and GT1, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that I feel like I've had a peek into what scooters will look like in 2024. These are the kind of scooters that change the entire landscape. Click the link in the video description for Segway's Indiegogo campaign, where you'll find the GT1 and GT2 for $500 off. We put a ton of work into every video we make, so please support the channel by liking and subscribing. If you want to learn more about the fastest beast scooters we've ever tested, check out these two reviews.